Hey there, welcome to Culture by Culture, a multidimensional exploration of Black and Asian pop cultural ties. I'm your incredibly excited host, Delia. And for our first episode, I thought if we're going to explore these pop cultural ties and the why behind them, it just made sense to start from the beginning, or at least my beginning. <laughs> Today, I have with me not just the first Black nerd that I ever knew, but the first nerd I ever knew in general, my dad. Hi, dad. Hi, baby. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, thank you for having me on your very, very first uh, podcast. I'm sure it will be a success, not because you have me, but because you're a bright <laughs> and intelligent young lady and you're going to make this work. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, the first black nerd that I <laughs> ever knew. <laughs> Uh, I grew up with friends that were, at the time, I don't think the word nerd was was a thing when I was growing up. So the closest thing I can attribute to that would be uh, squares. So we were square. We weren't jocks. We weren't a part of the elite. And I don't even know if we knew we, we were known as squares. People really didn't pay that much attention to us other than if they saw us, you know, go away. So, <laughs> so people weren't on the street shouting square. No, no, no. We we were pretty. Uh, what do you call us? Uh, conspicuous. I mean, the the tougher kids around growing up, mm -hmm. they just didn't really pay that much attention to us because we weren't <laughs> we weren't a threat. So, you know, they were more interested in bigger prey or whatever. So that was what we were. We were squares. Do you still consider yourself a square or what would you call yourself now? A nerd, a geek, something else? I'm an old head nerd. <laughs> okay, so what are you into as far as your nerdy interests? Of course, we're here to talk about Asian pop culture in particular, but in general, what strikes your fancy? All of the anything that has to do with pop culture, entertainment, anime, comic books, video games. Music, all of it really just fascinates me. And I don't I don't know where it really stemmed from. I, I kind of understand the growth of how I got to where I'm at, but I I really enjoy it all. And I, I think it stems from back in the day when growing up in the uh, segregated South. It was escapism. Although there wasn't anime at the time, there were comic books and other things mm -hmm. that you could use to entertain to escape that world. What would you say was your first um, foray into Asian pop culture, if you will? Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> well, actually, it was Dragon Ball. And it was just the idea. That stemmed from my love of comic books, which Dragon Ball is more like it's superhero -y, if you will. And mm -hmm. I just thought that was so fantastic that we had something not that we had, because it, it had been going on in Japan for a year or two before we got it here in the States. And when we finally did, I was just like, wow. I mean, the videos that you would see that we would go get from Blockbuster. I know a lot of people <laughs> were just like, Blockbuster? What's Blockbuster? <laughs> I do remember getting them from Blockbuster. I haven't watched Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z in full, but mostly I've watched it with you because you would be sitting in the living room watching it because again this is mostly before computers we weren't all on our own phones um we'd go to blockbuster and you'd get it and to me i a cartoon's a cartoon when you're that age it doesn't really matter <laughs> it wasn't looney tunes that's no. for sure um so as for dragon ball you said that it reminded you of the comic book superheroes of your youth um did your friends read comic books with you? Was it kind of a solo sort of venture for you? Was it really common amongst black young boys to be reading comic books? Well, my brother didn't, he wasn't into it. Uh, oddly enough, a neighbor up the street, he was into comic books, not as heavily as I was. As a matter of fact, <laughs> here we are, little black kids running around with tiles tied around their neck. We're flat. <laughs> Oh, my God. There are other kids have brooms riding them like cowboys and Indians. We're superheroes. It was just so much. I mean, we'd be, we'd be out there for hours flying or running, rather, with towels <laughs> tied around our necks, you know. I think about it now, and I wonder how other kids 
growing up in the segregated South, made it out sane. But, you know, it, it seemed like that really helped get uh, get us through it. Do you think there's anything about the stories of kung fu movies that were popular at the time and Godzilla and things like that that really lent themselves to be that escapism? Oh, I don't know that that I would have made it. We had to have Godzilla. We had to have the kung fu movies. I mean, Kung Fu Saturdays on television. And then there were the movies, the Godzilla movies on Saturdays that we go downtown because we only had one movie house in the town. And just to date myself, so everybody understands how long it was, it was 10 cents to get into the movies <laughs> to watch three features for that day. So we as kids, the movie opened at noon, and we go in, wait in line, pay, pay our 10 cents, and go into the movies and be there. And we watch movies all day. And it was just like the greatest thrill. And that was a form of escapism. Even though it was couched in segregation, we didn't care mm-hmm. because at that time it was normal. But it was just such a joy. And then we have the Hong Kong movies, which were the Chow Brothers. Hi, Editing Delia here. To clarify, by the Chow Brothers, my dad means the absolutely prolific powerhouse that was Shaw Brothers Studio. If you've seen any old kung fu movie that wasn't Bruce Lee, there's a good chance it was the Shaw Brothers. Okay. Back to my dad. They were making these things back to back to back, and I love them for it because we were believing in stuff that technically <laughs> this was the precursor probably to anime, the Hong Kong <laughs> movies, because they were doing some of the most impossible stuff, and we loved it. I mean, we would go out in the yard. And, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine there's not very many. Asian people growing up around you, like you, you don't have any IRL influences to cross-reference the media you're watching. The only Asians I saw were on television and the movies. And unless it came from the Hong Kong karate movies, anything else was pretty much in a bad lot. And so far mm-hmm. as uh, the Asian culture was concerned. I remember mm-hmm. watching the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh my and gosh, yes. The Mickey Rooney. The face. At the time when I saw it, I could not understand why in the heck is Mickey Rooney playing an Asian character <sighs> when they have tons of. But that was uh, the time. The Hong Kong movies were just excellent. And then whatever they represented on television was just like. <clears throat> I really hadn't sat with the fact that those were happening at the same time. You know, you know about the yellow face of uh, Mickey Rooney and and movies around that time. Um, But this was happening the same time as these Kung Fu movies are coming out and Godzilla is coming out. That is wild to me. Yeah. I, because you can, I mean, I don't excuse it for ignorance for obvious reasons, but I could see people making that argument. But then when you look at the time frame, there really was no, no sense, no reason. That is wild that was just the the times uh and we, we we actually we still live in those times during that time it was more it was i think more over now it has become combination of the two or more uh covert because i mean people didn't care about the racial stereotypes i mean not that they didn't care but they it was just what was done it was normal Mm-hmm. It wasn't seen as bad because we had been indoctrinated in our mind to think that maybe it was normal or, or think that it was normal. And that's the way we treated it. And it's so interesting because over time and, you know, it's something I want to talk about and look at throughout this podcast. But you see in both communities harboring prejudices against each other that stem from a lot of they stem from a lot of things ultimately white supremacy but it's these media portrayals that we had nothing to do with and it's just real it's disappointing to look at and to know that that's why because it's all based in nothing like it's a house of cards that really all it would have taken was a strong enough wind to come blow it but things were just so different and we were so and still are to some extent so indoctrinated with white supremacy and we're always trying to break that down now but back then 
that wasn't the case. A lot of good has come from good media and a right. lot of bad has come from bad media. And <laughs> oh, as, a, as a matter of fact, the very first positive Asian character I saw uh, at the, well, the Hong Kong movies, all those characters were positive, but the first positive character I saw on television was Bruce Lee. Oh, my Period. goodness. I mean, I wanted to be Bruce Lee. I mean, and the Green Hornet came out. He was Kato. Oh, I th- it gives me chills just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, how uh, how heroic he was. And at the time when they were shooting Green Hornet, I had no idea how what he had to go through just to get that little bit going in Hollywood. I mean, he was facing racial prejudice. And as a matter of fact, Bruce Lee was scheduled. They wanted him to do Kung Fu that ended up using David Carradine, a white actor, to portray the part of Kang in the in the mm-hmm. series. It would should have been Bruce Lee, but because he was really Asian, they said no. There have been so many injustices because of racial stereotypes that it is just like, it's nonsense. <laughs> That's a good way to put it because... When you start unpacking this stuff, it really is just nonsense. I see more points of connection through our interest in pop culture than I see points of division. But these bad portrayals and white supremacy, because that's what it is, um, come in. And I really want to put at the forefront people's experiences with cultures besides their own that are positive because I'd like for us to be able to take that power back and talk about the great experiences we had engaging with cultures that weren't ours and seeing cool pop culture and media that we'd never seen before. That's the goal. (laughs) I guess where I want to go next is I'm wondering if there's one memory of an anime, video game, movie, whatever, uh, that really sticks with you. (laughs) Yes, there is by far. I I would have to say this is number one, and you will remember it as well. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Oh, my goodness. That is still, I I played just a number of games, Mass Effect, Call of Duty, you name it. I, I, I've played just different uh, games, but Ocarina of Time will always be my number one video game. And you, as a little girl, <laughs> would sit, I mean, oh, it, uh, if I think about it too hard, I'll tear up, would sit with me while I played and make suggestions. Dad, <laughs> go over here. Dad, go look at this. And, oh, God. That to be on that journey with you, as a matter of fact, the the one thing I can remember is when it was over, when I finally beat the game and everything was happily ever after, all the people were happy and you just, you cried. (laughs) That was just, oh, that will always be my number one memory insofar as video games are concerned. I feel like something shifted in our household when Ocarina of Time came to stay. Yeah, I will say. Because <laughs> I, I many memories. Go ahead. No, no, I was I was just gonna say we didn't buy it. We had to pay nope. late fees because sure we read did. it from Blockbuster, <laughs> and I don't know how long we kept the game, but we kept it till A I finished. Long time. <laughs> yeah, we didn't buy it. I do remember that, but I we did have the. They used to, maybe they still make them. I don't really know. I, I think they'd be redundant with the internet, but like the whole guides they would make. Oh, yeah. Like paper bag guides. And yeah, it was, uh, as a matter of fact, it was Nintendo manu- uh, made the guide. And oh, God, I wish I had that thing now because it's worth a ton of money. I remember it. It was, it was real pretty to look at. But yeah, I remember sitting, you would sit on the couch and I would be sitting behind you. Yep. <laughs> watching you play on our. In 64, yeah, I have many, many memories that way. It was transformative for me as well. I... Remember uh, Nobby? 
Oh, for sure. Hey! I mean, I definitely <laughs> played it since, but I do remember, oh, even for me as a child, she was quite annoying because she just wouldn't, she wouldn't. Oh. I mean, it's a meme now. Everybody knows the meme, but. And you couldn't turn her off. No. <laughs> These days, they know, okay, we'll give you an option to turn yes. those types of prompts off. Oh, you cannot turn Navi off. No. You cannot. <laughs> and and I, I think about that uh, that game, because I'm going to start Twitch stream, because uh, I'm going to go oh, okay. back and, and start playing again. And it'll probably just be once a week, maybe twice a week, you know, and my handle is going to be 60 plus gamer. And uh, that'll be the first game that I play. Ocarina of Time. Oh, I don't care gosh. who watches, but it's just going to be enjoyable for me. The reason I'm going back is because my favorite part of that entire oh game, you're going to say, well, you're a masochist, is the water temple. Yes, I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> and yes, you are a masochist. Because what? <laughs> Why? In what world? <laughs> I don't know. But, well, I, I think because the rest of the game seemed not, not easy. I don't want to say it was easy because it wasn't. Uh, but, it, but it seemed at some point become fairly rudimentary, and but the water temple was a beast unto itself. And if you went in there just thinking you're gonna just straight up play it, uh, uh. uh no, 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 <laughs> it was just like because it took it took days to get through that thing. That thing, I have memories of it, and when I was finally playing through Ocarina of Time myself. As in that was in high school, probably I don't remember. Um, on our N sixty four because we still had it at the time. Right. I got to that water temple and it 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 stun locked me for a good while. I I do not like it. Um, my favorite temple I would say is the Shadow Temple, which is weird because I have memories as a child of being terrified. <laughs> I was gonna say, why would that be your favorite? <laughs> I have no idea. I think because I have such visceral memories of it, for some reason when I play it, I enjoy it more somehow. Um, it had the, what were those things called? The hands that would fall uh, off of the ceiling? Ugh. The very, very first time one grabbed me, it scared the, yeah, it scared me that much because you know it mm -hmm. coming, you hear it coming, you see the shadow boy, you think that I'm just like, what the heck is going on? And then it grabs you. And it is horrific. So, yeah, that I don't know why you, you like that temple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I really don't. Uh, it says a lot about me, I suppose. Well, I guess that brings me to my next question. Both me and Lil are quite nerdy, I would say, in our different ways. How do you feel that we turned out so nerdy? I think that I had some influence in that. The rest of it, I think it's your your intelligence and your curiosity that spurred you on because I wasn't there all the time to push forward your interest. For example, you liked In Inuyasha. At the time, mm -hmm. I liked anime, but I didn't care for Inuyasha. I don't know why. And I, like I said, I saw a clip the other day and I'm like, why didn't you like this? And Lil likes Supernatural. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was doing that would get Lil interested. I definitely, I can only speak for me. For me, absolutely, I would say your influence. Yes, I, I grew from there into my own specific interests. But yeah, growing up playing video games, that was huge in our household. It was encouraged to play video games. Like it wasn't a thing. Uh, growing up, my friends had restrictions on how long they could play video games. Or worse, their parents just didn't understand. And they would cross their fingers to get at least the one game they want for Christmas. And this was not an issue I ever had. It was encouraged in our household to play video games. And, you know, maybe some parents are listening and cringing. But I, for me, granted, I did have undiagnosed ADHD. So, you know, there is that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it was just such a creative and happy way to grow up. I mean, to be able to play Diddy Kong Racing as much as I want. I mean, as much as I could before my dad got home and started playing Madden or whatever. <laughs> Uh, being able to play Animal Crossing, uh, discovering that was pivotal for me. I also think because of the themes that a lot of these works cover, whether you're talking about anime or 
fantasy, like I, I'm interested in also uh, video games, being into media from so many different cultures made me just view the world differently with a much more open mind than probably I would have had I not had that. And I wonder, I guess I'll ask you what you think about the prevalence of nerd culture, but specifically Asian pop culture these days. How does it make you feel? But also, do you think it's escapism? Is it us being able to relate to these stories now? Because the stories are also... They were always complex, but so much more varied because there's just so much more these days. I think it's a combination of all the all of the above. I mean, anywhere worldwide stories, if you think about it, if you peel back the veil of skin color, culture, what have you, stories are pretty much the same. I mean, what happens to me can happen to somebody, whether they're Native American, uh, Hispanic, Asian, mm -hmm. around the world. It doesn't just have to be here in the States. It can be anywhere. And it's it's universal. And I think that's why the stories or what have you, in whether it's gaming, movies, or television, that's why they resonate so much with us, because we can relate to what's happening to that individual or that situation. You could see a story and not have any idea about but race, culture, or who the person is, and you would still be able to relate with the story because it's something or some part of that story that you have experienced that you can relate to. I definitely agree. Are you ever surprised to meet Black anime or, like, video game nerds that are your age? I haven't met anybody <laughs> my age. Really? No, which is I'm kind of hoping that that will change when I start my uh, – Twitch stream. I'm hoping that I will. Somebody will come out of the woodwork, but for the most part, I expect to get a lot of. You're too old to be doing this. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, I need anybody listening to this to send it to the old head in their life because I know that they're out there. I know that just like you said, you had you'd go to the movies to watch Godzilla <laughs> with those black kids, and who's to say they didn't spin out and become anime nerds later in life or video game nerds or both who's to say so if y'all are listening please send it to the old head in your life so they can sound off so i can show my dad that there are others like him and you're absolutely not too old well i i know that and i i wouldn't let that stop me the fact that you know these young young whippersnappers and the reason i say that is because uh i i, I would play uh, halo and it was just a, a very short foray into Halo That's multiplayer. Right. You did play Halo for a second. Yeah. I, now, I played the single player, but I, I said, well, let me try my hand at Halo multiplayer. And that lasted for about 30 minutes. And I was getting dropped. <laughs> these, oh, no. these young heads with these fast, I would turn a corner and see somebody. I got, boom, dead. Okay. <laughs> I'd respawn. <laughs> I'd go back. Oh, I got hit. Boom. Dead. I'm like, I did for 30 I did not get one kill. Do you hear me? <laughs> not one kill. I got killed probably, I don't know. I got killed in double digits. Oh. And my I just said, goodness. this is a, a young man's game. You know, and, <laughs> and, and, and I said I, at the time I said that, but now I realize it's just a matter of. Uh, a practice you know you can't practice, practice, nowadays practice. with the with the skill set there is as a matter of fact your cousin i gotta give it to the boy at the time was good do you remember in uh legend of zelda Ocarina of time that you could mm -hmm. lock on with the z mm -hmm. right you could lock on to uh the enemy or what have you he didn't use the z lock and i realized he just he had a uh, he had a skill and i talked to his mother and I told you, you probably need to look because it was just beginning to start up kids playing professionally. Mm -hmm. And I said, you might want to look into, uh, into uh, going pro with this kid or getting a sponsor for him or something. And, you know, at the time, a lot of parents were saying it was a waste of time. And that's how mm -hmm. they uh, they felt about it. Now kids are making more than their parents. This is what I'm talking about. Like, I feel very lucky to have grown up in a household that... I mean, I didn't have that kind of skill set at games, but if I had, it would have been encouraged to like, 
all right, let's explore this. Let's see where this goes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Had had you exhibited anything like uh, like that, I mean, we would have pushed it to the nth degree or, or, you know, try to get you to a point to where we could see would this be a waste of time. And that, and that would be a part of my, my twist stream. You know, eventually I'll go back to Call of Duty or something like that and try to have somebody train me on the side before I actually get into the game and embarrass myself on the stream. Are you going to play uh, Breath of the Wild 2, Tears of the Kingdom when it comes out? Well, the first game I'm going to play is Ocarina. Legends uh, of okay. Ocarina of Time. That's going to be my introduction on my on my stream because it's a game I'm familiar with. It's a game I love, and hopefully I can get through it to play it because I have every intention of of playing the new uh, the new Zelda. I played Ocarina of Time and I played Majora's Mask, which was this, the next. Uh, game Mm -hmm. and i played it halfway through and i don't know what what happened well firstly we were still renting at that point so yeah that could have been it that that could have been it (laughs) (laughs) yeah we weren't we weren't the richest family on the block (laughs) (laughs) we were not (laughs) okay well my last question for you is if you could only watch one anime or movie or play one video game for the rest of time what would they be and why Oh, it, Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. I should have known. Yeah, I mean, it 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 has it has such fond memories for me. I think I played, you know, Madden and all those other games before, but Ocarina boy, of, did you! Uh, oh yeah, but Ocarina of Time, it has such fond memories that you and I, I mean, playing together, bonding together, and it was just, I mean, I I, I think on IGN it was given the there have been other video games since, but at the time it got a 10 and mm-hmm. it was deemed or, or labeled as a masterpiece. There's always, I'll read something or see a YouTube video, something new about uh, Ocarina of Time. And I'm just like, I didn't know that. And that's one reason I'm going to go back and play it because there's stuff in there that I didn't know that we could do or find. And I want to go back and find it. <laughs> Even okay, in the water well, temple. I, I will watch your stream and I will root you on. <laughs> it, I will not be, I will not be, do not ask for my help with the water temple. I have none to give. <laughs> oh, it, it's going to be fun. Do you have, okay, what about an anime? Uh, that would have to be Dragon Ball. Okay. Because there's Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and then... The creme de la creme, Dragon Ball Z Super. Yeah, that was the best. Okay, well, that's all I have for us today. Thank you so much for joining me for the first episode of Culture by Culture. Oh, it's my pleasure. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? Where can people find you, if they can find you at all? Oh, well, they can't find me anywhere yet. Uh, I'll get back with you, and once everything's up and running, if you want to give me a plug, you can, but it, it's been a pleasure helping you with your inaugural podcast. I hope it goes well. I know you'll be successful in spite of this <laughs> podcast because you're going to have other guests that I'm sure are probably just a, a tad more excited than me. So I think people are going to love you. I already don't you worry. Don't you worry about it. OK. All right. I'm, I'm going to leave it in your capable hands. <laughs> And thank you, everyone, so much for listening. I want to know what anime or video game would you play for the rest of time if you could only choose one and why? Let me know. You can let me know at Culture X Podcast on Twitter or Instagram. We have so much cool stuff coming up this season. I hope you stick around. You can subscribe on your favorite podcasting app or, again, follow us on social so you don't miss any new episodes. And we'll see you next week. And until then, keep it chill and keep it nerdy.